As you heard, I'm Bradley Horowitz, and I'm responsible for Google Plus at Google. I want to take a little bit of time to um, describe Google Plus to you and tell you how I, how I think we uh, fit into the education opportunity. Um, I first wanted to share a non-goal. Um, the non-goal is that the kids in the back of the room are on Google Plus instead of Facebook. <laughs> it's okay with us if that happens, but that's not why we're doing this. Um, I want to share why it is we're doing this. And if you think about Google's mission to organize the world's information, make it universally accessible and useful to people, to think we could do that absent understanding the user, deeply understanding the user, was a bit of a conceit. It sort of worked for a decade and uh, it got us to a certain plateau. But we really believe that the opportunity to understand the person on the other side of the query will transform everything that we do. So today, it's rather amazing if you think about it, for most people coming to Google with our most popular service, they peck in 12 keystrokes, they hit enter, uh, we send them on their way, they're happy, we make, we make billions of dollars, it's all good, you know, nothing wrong with that picture, but we don't know much about the person on the other end of the wire absent the characters they pecked in. We know their IP address, which we can geolocate to help serve them content in the right locale and language. We know some cookies we dropped on their browser, the user agent. But for most users, we don't have a lot of durable information. We're sort of like Rain Man. You know, you sort of tell us you're into kite surfing on Thursday. You come back on Monday. We've forgotten. You're starting anew with Google every time. And we think that if we deeply understood who a user was, who they knew, and what they cared about, Every service we provide could get better. Not only better search, but a better phone, a better browser, better Gmail. Yes, better ads. You know, that's part of it too. Um, and that's really the underlying motivations around why we're building Google Plus from the Google perspective. Now, from the user perspective, being late to market is never fun. This is not the preferred option. Uh, but we are late to market, and it gave us an opportunity to do a lot of learning, both what was working for users and where we had opportunities to differentiate and do something different. And so we talked to users. We, we looked at uh, products that were out there in the market. And we came to a couple realizations. Um, probably not too surprising, but the first one is that privacy actually matters. People care about privacy. And uh, the situation people find themselves in now, I'm, at least personally, my Facebook friends graph includes people who I went to kindergarten school with, people uh, who are my neighbors, my real life family, um, people I've met at conferences, people I absolutely have no recollection of how they became my friend. I've got about 2,000 friends. And it's a completely diverse and diffuse uh, audience at this point, if you will. And not only could we not take a meaningful AI class together, there's almost nothing I could say to an audience like that that is meaningful. And what we find is that conversation degrades to least common denominator. So it becomes stuck in traffic on 101 and I just checked into the Olive Garden. You know, That's the level of discourse that tends to happen when you have an audience that is not contextual. There's none of this sort of um, affinity that's bringing us together. These are people I know. Um, with some definition of no. Um, and so what we introduced is a new model for how we think people interact in the real, real world. We wanted to bring that online and we created something we call circles. So in the real world, you're limited by the physical environment. There are these things called walls and I understand that sound does not travel through them much. And uh, there's things called distance and it gives me this physicality that gives me context. I know when I whisper to someone what that means and where the, the content will travel. And I know when I stand at a podium like this, I know who's in the room. I can look around and understand the context. And that's what we tried to introduce with circles, the reintroduction of context so that people can have more meaningful conversations by understanding who's in the virtual room together. And this has been something that has really resonated with users. The goal of our system was to build something that was as good or better for a whisper <coughs> as it is for a shout, meaning as good for private communication as email or Facebook, and as good for public communication as services like Twitter or Blogger, in terms of standing at a podium and reaching an audience. And we found that in practice, people do in fact use our service this way. We have almost a 50-50 split between people sharing privately to circles and people using our platform as a public uh, means of expression to find their audience. 
Um, one of the things I've, this is actually user generated, we didn't design this um, with, with this goal in mind, but users have told us Facebook is for people I know, Twitter is for people I wish I knew, Lady Gaga and Kanye, <laughs> and Google Plus is to find people who care about the same things as me, people I share an interest with. Now we have a long way to go to further develop that, but if you think about Google itself, people whisper those interests into Google all the time. If I type in kite surfing, we have a real opportunity to connect you not only to web pages that contain those characters, but communities of real people who are kite surfing aficionados, experts in my neighborhood, friends of mine who might be into it that I didn't know, all kinds of opportunity to connect people around this interest graph. So that is very much one of the things we hope to serve. And I think you heard in the previous presentations that for that reason, we see social connecting uh, people around topics of interest as a huge opportunity. The other thing I wanted to briefly touch on as improving the state of social networking uh, uh, from where it is today is something we have called Hangouts. Hangouts is in some ways not a new technology, but it's really been the purview of rather dedicated high-end systems. It's video conferencing. It's the ability to connect people face-to-face and people meaning multi-way video conferencing, we allow up to 10 people in a virtual room to connect together. And we provide this for free using standard commodity hardware, things like uh, laptops and webcams and standard internet connections. And we use infrastructure that Google has built over a decade. Things like YouTube serving infrastructure allow us to do this at scale and with reasonable cost. It's also a platform, so it's not just about video conferencing. You can screencast, you can actually write dedicated apps within the Hangouts framework that do very interesting things. So if you're playing poker, it's sometimes helpful to look someone in the eyes and see if they're bluffing. So people have done things like casual gaming within that. They've done virtual whiteboards within that framework. It's very new and exciting. And one of the things that we added was the ability to broadcast a Hangout. So not only can 10 people hang out and interact together, but a million people could watch that interaction. And we have seen uses in things like uh, politics, where President Obama did a town hall meeting with six citizens, and that meeting was both simultaneously broadcast to hundreds of thousands and subsequently watched by millions on demand. So uh, there's many, many use cases like this, and many of them are in the broad category of learning. I want to tell you about a few. Um, some of these are um, explicitly learning, sort of higher education. Some of them are more ad hoc. One of the most popular videos on YouTube is how to tie a bow tie, right? This is sort of experiential learning that's very hard to do absent video. Um, it, video is a, a great mechanism for conveying lots of information. Early on in Hangouts, we heard a story about a, uh, it was actually from an intern, someone who was interning at Google over the summer, and he told us the story of his brother, who was a hospital, or who was a doctor at a hospital in rural Kentucky, and in that hospital, a child uh, was brought in who'd been shot, and it was a spinal cord injury, and the surgeon there did not have the expertise locally to really confidently proceed with the surgery, and so using a Google Hangout, they connected with doctors in a major metropolitan hospital, and live in the surgical theater, doctors guided them through uh, the surgery that was successful and um, the kid can walk and it's a happy ending and you know we did not build our service with that use case in mind I'm not sure it's even HIPAA compliant to sort of have a, a uh, you know hang out in the surgical theater but um, we're learning from these unexpected use cases the things like the stuttering community have gotten together in Google Hangouts the deaf community people are doing language instruction and the ability to both have a real-time close-knit community but share that as a video artifact after the fact and broadcast that during uh, the presentation um, opens up many, many possibilities. Uh, we're building this for the ages. As I mentioned, this is not about, you know, Google wants a piece of the social networking action. This is a long-term uh, vision for Google that will change our interaction with every user of every product that we have. Um, so it's very ambitious and will take a very long time, but the opportunities are many. We care a lot about the education opportunity. Um, you know, if, if people come to our service and they water each other's farms and throw sheep at each other, that's okay. But again, that's not why we did this. We think that the world deserves better discourse and the opportunity to connect with experts and people who are passionate about uh, real world things is 
uh, something we want to offer to people, not just to blurt out in 140 characters, but to really engage face to face, to have discourse, threaded conversations, to connect about things that they're passionate about, and raise the quality of uh, both conversation and education. That's why we're building this. And it's increasingly becoming a platform. We've sort of tried to compress a decade of social networking into the past year that we've been in market. But increasingly, we're opening up the APIs and inviting developers and publishers to contribute to this platform. And so I feel like uh, years from now, uh, my hope is that a lot of education um, will be happening on top of our platform. And uh, we're building it with that in mind. And so with that, I think we can move to the panel. Okay, let's do it.